Hello, my name is Mallory Raymond and I'm a neurotologist at Mayo Clinic, Florida. A neurotologist is someone who performs surgery on the ear and the bone that separates the ear and the brain cavity in order to help patients with disorders affecting hearing. Today, I'd like to talk to you about a rare condition uh, that I commonly help patients with called cerebrospinal fluid leaks from the ear. CSF is a fluid made by your body that surrounds the brain and spinal cord to provide cushion from injury. CSF is surrounded by layers of covering, which keep it contained. A CSF leak can occur when the outermost layer of that covering called the dura develops a hole, allowing for fluid to escape. Deep to the eardrum is a middle ear cavity, an air-filled space containing the hearing bones needed to transmit sound. This cavity sits just below the portion of the skull that separates the ear from the brain. When the bone of this portion of the skull develops a hole, CSF can leak into the middle ear, causing it to fill up with fluid, leading to hearing loss. CSF leaks into the middle ear have many causes, including trauma of the head or elevated intracranial hypertension, which means elevated pressure of the CSF. Risk factors for elevated intracranial hypertension include obesity and sleep apnea, but for some patients diagnosed with a CSF leak, a cause often can't be identified. CSF leaks present similar to many other conditions of the ear, which can sometimes make a diagnosis difficult. These symptoms include hearing loss, feeling of fullness in the ear, disequilibrium, or ringing in the ear. Many times, patients will undergo a minor procedure to drain the fluid from the middle ear, which results in intermittent or constant bothersome watery-like drainage from the ear that doesn't get better. When I suspect a CSF leak, I will often test the fluid draining from the ear canal for a protein called beta-2 transferrin, a protein that's almost exclusively found in CSF. If the test is positive, we can be fairly certain that the fluid is CSF and not something else. Surgery to stop the CSF leak and repair the dura and skull is recommended to prevent a severe infection from occurring around the brain. Surgery will also stop the bothersome drainage from the ear canal and can improve the hearing. In order to prepare for surgery and identify the site of the leak, a detailed CT scan of the skull will be done. An MRI of the brain might also be done in order to look for signs of elevated intracranial hypertension. Sometimes the MRI will show the presence of an encephalocele, or a protrusion of a small portion of the brain through the defect in the skull. Seeing a report that says brain herniation can be quite alarming, but we found that this portion of the brain is not active and herniation in this context does not point to an emergency situation. Depending on the location of the CSF leak, surgery will be done from above or from below. Surgery done from below is called the transmastoid approach and involves drilling of the bone behind the ear canal in this region to access the hole and plug it from the undersurface using a combination of bone and soft tissue from the patient's own body. Surgery done from above is called the middle fossa approach and requires a craniotomy or a small hole to be drilled into the side of the skull to plug defects that are located deep inside or over the hearing bones. In this approach, a similar combination of bone and soft tissue is used to plug the hole and gravity is used to keep the repair in place. In the evaluation and treatment of CSF leaks from the ear, as a neurotologist, I'm just one member of a large, outstanding, multidisciplinary team at Mayo Clinic Florida, made up of audiologists, neurologists, neuroophthalmologists, and neurosurgeons. We aim to create an individualized approach to all aspects of our care for patients with CSF leaks. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be part of such a collaborative team whose goal is putting the patient first. So if you've been diagnosed with a CSF leak from your ear or are concerned that your symptoms might point to one, but you're just not sure what's going on, please feel free to connect with us. We would love the opportunity to help or point you in the right direction. I hope that this video is educational and thank you so much for viewing it.